Hi, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University. Today I'm going to show you how to take Qualtrics data that you have collected from a survey and analyze it. Instead of using a big, bulky statistical program like uh, SPSS, we're going to use Google Sheets. When you use Google Sheets, it's going to look a lot like Excel but it is a format that you can share across the cloud where multiple people can be working on it at the same time and of course multiple people can see the analysis and access it uh, so it's a really great way to work when you're working in teams so let's go ahead and go into a survey that has already collected data on it to tell you a little bit about this survey this was a pre-campaign survey that was meant to create a baseline of understanding for the client on where their different target publics were for a couple of different uh, concepts and measures. This particular organization is a great advocacy group called Sparta, and they advocate for LGBTQIA um, resources and services for veterans and service members. So as you can see, uh, the structure of this survey is set up into two different blocks. The first block is the consent message, and then the second block here are all of the survey questions. That's how you should set up your survey. And then every single uh, scale is set up in a different matrix question item. So this is a knowledge scale right here. And it is set up, as you can see over here on the side, as a matrix table. These happen to be um, bipolar adjectives uh, for semantic differential scale. So you can see that's selected. And then the team has changed the name in Qualtrics of the actual question. So instead of saying Q1 here, they created their very own little label that would, will then carry over into the individual items that that are on the scale when it is in data format. So their little label is no trans, and then this is going to be no trans one, no trans two, no trans three. They repeated this particular scale three different times with uh, three different sort of focal points or frames. They were looking for an understanding of what the respondent knew about the rights of transgender people, so they called that no trans. They were then looking at uh, what the respondent knew with regard to rights of active duty um, trans military members, and they called that trans mil. And then they looked at knowledge of Sparta and they called that trans Sparta. So you can see this very same scale has been repeated three different times. If you're looking for scales, this scale may look a little familiar from what you have on Canvas in the sample scales uh, page. And this particular scale is a knowledge scale that is available to you and it is set up as a semantic differential. So you can see their knowledge scale was right here and the source is the um, Oliver and Bearden reading right there. They have also put in a um, sort of a, a secret little note just for people on the back end of Qualtrics which will show you what the source of the scale was. And this is really helpful for when you're doing analysis because you need to know where you got the scale from. And so having that sort of noted actually in the Qualtrics will actually help you with that. They also did an attitude scale. And so you can see here we have a Likert type scale set up. And in this particular one, they called it ATT for attitude. And they have one, two, three, four items on their attitude scale. You can see the sources put in here as Mathwick and uh, Rigdon. And they have this set up as a matrix table, Likert. And they have four statements with five different points. Now, they did their range from strongly agree to strongly disagree. I actually typically like to flip it. I like to go from strongly disagree to strongly agree, but it doesn't matter because we're going to get it all fixed uh, when we do the analysis. And then after they have their, uh, their really four scales, because they have a knowledge scale for uh, trans rights, they have a knowledge scale for active duty 
trans rights, they have a knowledge scale for Sparta, and then they have an attitude scale for Sparta. So after these four different scales, then they have all of their demographics. And so this gives you a little bit of familiarity of the data that we're going to be working with today. So how do you analyze it? Well, you're gonna to go to this little button up here for data and analysis. Um, you're gonna see a snapshot of all of the different data that you've collected. Go ahead and go to export and import and export your data. And then you could do Excel, but today we're going to do Google Drive. And I'm going to export it to my Google Drive and I'm going to ensure that I have use choice text here selected. So go ahead and export it. It's gonna say, hey, which Google Drive do you want? If you've got 5,000 Google addresses, choose the one that you wanna use. And then it is going to populate in your uh, Google Sheets. And you, of course, can then give access to this Google Sheet to anybody that is in your group by clicking the share button, right? All right, so when we are uh, looking at this spreadsheet, there's, a, there's just a lot of information here. You can scroll forever. Each line is a different respondent, and this keeps all of their information together. So um, it's a little difficult for me to see all of this on the screen right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to resize the columns. I have highlighted all of the columns. You could either click up here in this little square um, or you could do Apple A on a Mac and then I'm going to right click on a column if I can get it to not unselect. Right click on a column and then I'm going to resize all of my columns um, I'm just gonna say 30 for my columns. I'm just gonna kind of guess that size. Okay, so I can now at least see everything on the screen, which is great. Now, some of these are a little bit cut off, and if I wanted to, I could make them a little bit longer. I can do whatever I need to, but just for us kind of going through the data here, um, this is how we're going to work with it. All right, so up in here, I can see that I have my no trans uh, one. You can see the one there. No trans two. You can see the two there. And then no trans three. You can see the three there. And then it is about um, ranking your familiarity or how informed you are or how knowledgeable you are. Um, with trans rights. So um, this shows you where your little label came in, um, which is going to be your variable name. And then underneath it, I would call this the um, more of the, the notation of the prompt that your respondents saw in there. Now, if the things um, like all of this extra uh, text in the beginning is a little bit much for you and it makes you uncomfortable, you can go ahead and um, put it on your clipboard and then do a find and replace. And I can find all of uh, these instances and I'm gonna do match case, I'm gonna do match entire contents of cells and then I'm gonna just replace it with nothing and it will delete out all of that information that was at the very beginning of um, the uh, of the notation here of what the respondent saw but you you guys don't have to worry about that if you don't want to um, so let's go ahead and start to clean up your data i noticed that at the top of my data set my data set starts at line three I noticed that there's a bunch of folks who didn't fill it out at all, but they still had their data recorded. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them because this is no data in here at all. So I'm gonna get rid of them. Now, I do see that, that there, are, there are times when someone did not answer a question, like right here, this person skipped this one. Uh, over here, this person skipped this one. Oh, look, this person actually skipped a couple, right? Um, and so I have these like onesie twosie bits of missing information where the respondent did not provide information. 
I'm okay with the respondent skipping one or two, right? That's an IRB thing where the respondent should be able to skip any question that the respondent does not want to answer. So I'm okay with that. What I do wanna do is I wanna to look to see if so much is skipped that I don't have enough information to really use in my analysis, that's when I'm gonna delete somebody. Um, so even this one up here where you see uh, there was um, you know, a, a couple of uh, skipped items here, a couple of skipped items here, and then here, but the respondent did do the entire attitude scale, which is um, right there, ATT1, ATT2, three, and four. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this person, and this is really just a decision that you as a researcher get to make on who you keep and who you cut. Um, now you can see I have these, these big gaps here where these folks uh, did not play along, so um, I'm going to delete all of them. Now keep in mind, you can see my entire data set on my screen right now because of how I resized everything. If I couldn't see my entire data set, I would want to scroll to um, scroll to the side to make sure that indeed somebody didn't just pick up the survey later on in the taking of it. All right, so you're going to go ahead and delete out all of the ones that don't have data. So now I see I get to uh, line 91. I've got two lines of sort of setup in here. Um, so that means I have 89 responses in the survey. Not bad. Now again, there are some places where things are skipped, but I'm okay with that and I'll totally live with that. All right, so the next thing I wanna do in my cleaning is I wanna take these words like strongly agree or neither agree nor disagree, et cetera, and I wanna turn them into numbers. I cannot do quantitative analysis on words. So if I go back to my Qualtrics and I go back to my survey and I look at how these attitude questions were asked, I see that my, op my options were people could select strongly agree, somewhat agree, neither agree nor disagree, somewhat disagree, or strongly disagree. And so that is what is recorded in here. I wanna turn a strongly disagree, I'm sorry, a strongly agree into a five. Now notice here, strongly agree has both of the words capitalized. So when I do my find and replace, which is edit, find and replace. When I do my find and replace, I'm going to type it exactly as it appears. And again, I'm gonna do match case and match entire contents. I'm going to replace all the strongly agrees with a five. Now I like to have a large number equal a large amount of a concept. If you think about the concept that we're looking at here, this concept is attitude. And so if someone says, I say positive things about Sparta to other people and they strongly agree, I want that to be a five. Um, so this is where I'm kind of fixing how this was um, initially recorded in that uh, Qualtrics would have given it a one, but I'm gonna actually put it in a five position. So strongly agrees, all strongly agrees, matching case and matching entire contents of the cell are going um, to be replaced with a five. Replace all, I had 113 instances, that's great. Um, so the next one is gonna be somewhat agree. Now look at this, and somewhat agree, we have a lowercase a. So I'm gonna go back into my find and replace, which is edit, find and replace. I'm going to paste, somewhat agree, match case, match entire, entire contents of cell, and those are now gonna become fours. So replace all, I had 74 instances. Next is the neither agree nor disagree. Put that on my clipboard. And then I'm going to find and replace. I'm going to find the exact string, match case, match entire contents of cell. Turn that into a three. Replace all, I had 131 of those. I had, uh, let's go for somewhat disagree. Let's do these in the order here. Somewhat disagree is going to find and replace. 
these become a two, match case, match entire contents of cell, replace all, done. And then I take my strongly disagrees and I turn these all into ones. Match case, match entire contents of cell, replace all, done. So now I have numbers here for the attitude items as well. All right, um, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit and make this now a little bit easier for us to do the analysis. Um, so it's, it's a little bit difficult now to see all of um, what these different variables are of how I have it resized. I just wanted everything on my screen as I was doing the cleaning. So instead of 30, I'm gonna go maybe more like 40 um, for my, my size. And that gives me a little bit more room here. Um, I can see that I still don't have all of the ability to look at the name. So let me go ahead and do some text wrapping and so now I can see this is no trans one, no trans two, no trans three. As I get into the analysis piece, so I've done my cleaning, I've taken out all the people who didn't answer and I've turned um, things into numbers where I can uh, move through and actually do some analysis. As I get into the analysis part, I'm gonna do a few things that are really just um, personal preference at this point. So one is I wanna sort of have a visual um, demarcation of where a scale um, stops and starts. Because when I look across here, it's, it's just a, a, a lot for me to take in in a spreadsheet to know that just these three items are one scale and then the next three items are one scale, the next three items are one scale, and then these four ATT items are a scale. So I'm going to give them a little bit of um, a color code. Uh, so let me just go ahead and find some good colors in here. So we'll do uh, this color. The next three items go together, right? They all have the same label and then one, two, three. And we'll give this a good color. Excellent, and then the next items, we'll go ahead and give this a good color. And then the attitude items, I'll go ahead and give these guys a color too. Excellent. So you do not have to do this kind of color coding, but to me, this very clearly shows me that this is the no trans scale, this is the trans mill scale, this is the um, Sparta knowledge scale, and this is the attitude scale. So now we can actually start to do the analysis. You know, the reason we used these scales to begin with, these three items for knowledge, and then um, we'll see if I can find that attitude one. Attitude toward the company is the attitude scale that we used. The reason that we used these scales are because you can't just say, I say positive things about, in this case, Sparta to other people and have that completely measure attitude, right? And so we needed these four items to get a robust and, and really good definition of what attitude was. And so when we do the analysis, we're not just going to look at ATT1 or ATT2 on its own. We want to look at all of the ATTs in here. And so we want a one score for ATT as opposed to having uh, these um, different variables, these four different variables. All right, so we're gonna create an index score. Um, I will go, um, you can do it at the beginning or the end, or you can really put it anywhere you like. I like to do mine right before the items, so I'm gonna insert one column 
um, to the left and I'm just actually going to call it ATT attitude and this is the attitude attitude um, index and I'm going to now insert a formula and so you'll have to use the um, handout that you got about formulas and your best friend Google to figure out how can I create one score that represents all four of these numbers right that of course is an average or a mean score so um, I'm going to type in the equal sign which tells it that this is a formula I'll just start to type average because I know that that's um, what Google Sheets and Excel um, has as the actual formula and it pops up so I'll go ahead and select it and then I have to be very careful with my cursor here. Anything that I touch actually goes into the formula. And so be very careful with your cursor and what you're putting into the formula. And so really pay attention to what's happening up here in the formula bar, as well as what it is that you're touching and putting the dancing ants around here. So I'm going to click on the last one and bring it over and I, want it to go from uh, U3 to X3. And now I see it goes from U3 to X3. I have the dancing ants, which is around uh, the highlighting around those numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter so that I don't add anything else to the formula. Now, one great thing that it is asking me at this point is, would you like to autofill? You can go ahead and press autofill on yours. I'm gonna actually show you how you would autofill it if you didn't press that. So I'm gonna reject the selection. When I come up here, if I had missed the opportunity to autofill, or maybe I didn't get it, in both Excel and in Google Sheets, you can click on this little square here in the corner Click on that square and then drag him down and that will autofill the formula, but it'll do the computation on this line. It'll do the computation on this line. and the, So it's applying the formula down. So it's not just a copy paste, it's a copy paste of the formula. So I'm going to apply it down to our last bit of people at the bottom right there and there we go so now i see some of these didn't work because they didn't fill out these areas i'm totally fine with that we will um, continue on in the analysis so this now this att this attitude um, index is what i'm going to use when i am talking about attitude now it's not enough to say overall attitude was X. You need to parse that data more fully. And so I'm gonna look over, I didn't really clean any of the demographic variables that are in here, but one of the easier demographic variables that doesn't need a lot of cleaning is actually rank. Because when we asked rank, if I go back to the survey, I'll scroll down to rank, when we asked rank this was actually a drop down where they could choose any of these rank options in here so i am um, because it was already coded in it comes back into the data really nice and easy so if i want to know what people's attitude toward sparta is based on rank i'm wondering if different ranks have different attitudes towards sparta then I would create a pivot table to showcase that. <coughs> Not COVID. So um, to create a pivot table, I'm gonna click up here in the corner to select everything. And I am going to find my pivot tables in sheets, which is always fun. insert pivot table it's going to give me a pop-up and it's going to say do you want it on a new sheet or an existing sheet right now i'm going to say a new sheet because i don't have any other sheets in here okay so now what do i want on my pivot table i want that rank 
to be in the rows. So I'm going to um, pull him up, rank in the rows. And then I want the values, I can go ahead and click on values. I want the values to be that ATT, that index, that new number that I created. Now, the number here is weird. That, that's not what I want. I don't want to know how many there were. I actually need to change in the value, I need to change it to average. And so now I can see how the uh, attitude of Sparta differs based on people's rank. But I do still have kind of a messy table here, right? With um, the people who didn't answer are in here. I've got the prompts in here. It's just a little messy. So if you go into filters and you press add a filter, you wanna go to rank because that's where the weirdness is coming from. And then instead of show all items, you can now uncheck the things that you don't wanna see. I don't wanna see the blanks, so these top two lines are gonna go away. I also don't wanna see these I've never served before and you know the question in there. So I've turned those off and now my uh, pivot table is a little bit easier to read. Maybe I don't wanna go out to a gazillion different decimal points, so I can um, increase the decimal point to whatever um, size I want it to be. What's interesting here is that we can see how leadership may know more about the organization than maybe the lower ranked or um, a bell-shaped curve in here. So if I wanted to add more items onto this table, I could by just adding in, like if I had done a a index score for say no trans or trans male or trans sparta i could add those as well and i would just um, in the value section add them just like i added att i would add in those index items in there now sometimes when you are creating we're going to go ahead and do an index on no trans um, and I'm going to create a column to the left. Sometimes when you do your um, index in, um, in Excel or in Google Sheets, you might have some um, issues where it doesn't read it correctly. I'm, I'm gonna see if this one is working or if I get a chance to show you here um, how to correct an error. So I'm gonna go into the first um, line, the first respondent, I'm gonna press my equals, and I'm gonna try to do an average. I'm gonna select average when it pops up. I just wanna do these three. So it's gonna be L3 through N3, press enter, and look, it comes up as an error. So I have been playing around with this um, spreadsheet and I have determined that the reason it's coming up with an error is because these, for whatever reason, did not get input as numbers. So if I highlight these columns, and I know that they are my problem columns, and then I go to format, and then I say number, and instead of being automatic, I actually say, no, no, I want this to be formatted as a number. Then it will know it's a number, and then it will give me an average. So there are times when your formulas will not work out. When your formulas don't work out, that's when you have to turn to Google and you have to troubleshoot to figure out why your formula isn't working out. Um, in that case, it was that they, uh, for whatever reason, Google Sheets thought that these were words, not numbers. So when I reformatted the columns and I said, no, no, these are numbers, then Google Sheets knew what to do with it and was able to do the formula. I'm gonna drag this formula down and apply it again, just like I did with the attitude. And I can see now that we have the no trans um, score, index score, no trans index score. And it's actually probably more helpful if I go up into no trans and I look to see 
how much you know about the rights of trans people. Okay, so I can come in here and I can say um, knowledge of rights of trans people. Excellent. So this tells me really what the index is getting at. And this is my little index label. And then the index, of course, includes no trans one, two, and three. So if I go back over to that pivot table that I had created, I should be able to add value. And I should be able to choose no trans. And I don't want it to be a count. I want it to be an average. And now I can see how the, the um, knowledge of the rights of trans people varies based on one's rank. And then I would just repeat this with the other remaining indices that we have in the data set. So it is not enough when you are doing your data analysis to merely come up with a score on no trans one. It is not enough in your data analysis to come up with an index score. When you're doing data analysis, what you have to do is to take these measures, these different color-coded scales, and then you have to cut them by different ways that you look at your data, which tend to come through your demographics. That's how you start to understand where you are. So make sure that you're doing a deep look at your data analysis and that you are um, building pivot tables that actually give you a greater understanding of where your different target publics are for the different um, categories or concepts that you were looking at. So happy researching and enjoy the fun of Excel and Google Sheets and all that is analysis.